season as the crowd begin to rise the roar for Keith Wood and his team. Ireland, England, we cocked up by losing to Scotland, so we were not going for a grand slam. As you would imagine, playing in Lansdowne Road against England, there was a huge build-up. Everybody was very nervous, but those are the games you want to play in. Those are the games you train for, you practice for. I think it was our turn out of the Celtic nations to deny England the slam. Wales and Scotland had done it previous years, so um, I remember that being the, the build-up thought. Clive Woodward is in a long line of cocky English coaches and he certainly came to that match certain that of victory and it wasn't going to be just winning the match. They were going to win it in a style which would copper fasten his career. Ireland, uh, you know, I suspect probably lucky that the game had been postponed because of foot and mouth from the previous season and they were up for it and England, I think, had been delayed by several months and perhaps they you know, they just didn't get their preparation right, but Ireland certainly weren't going to let them off the hook. And then they tried to play an expansive game from the opening whistle. They failed to understand Mrs. Beaton's critical menu for the making of chicken soup. First, catch your chicken. And they did not subdue the rampant Irish, and that was the end of Woodward, at least on that occasion. Here's Balshaw, playing the test team, crashes into his own man, and certainly fully let him know he was there. The naivety of England, which I found most reassuring, because we all assume now, again, with professionalism and with the job Clive Woodward has done, he has been a magnificent coach in his time, but that day, they got it so wrong, uh, right from the off, Johnny Wilkinson started throwing the ball about, and it wasn't the England we had come to expect or the tactics we thought that they might use. And Ireland did what Ireland do best. They got stuck into them. They played the game in their faces. They messed them about. The crowd got behind us. We stuck the ball up in the air. And it was real back to basic bread and butter stuff. But on the day, they were the appropriate tactics. And it provided one of the great Irish wins. So Julian White's the culprit this time. Now let's see. There it is on the pin to walk. move off a great take of the line out. Let's have another look at this and again and again and again. Up goes Galway this time. On the peel, Wood back. Ireland played particularly well but the significant moment in that game came when, when, when David Humphreys put a kick into the corner and Ireland forced the line out some five or six metres from the English line and it was as nice a work a tap move as you could possibly see. It was tapped down from, from Galway down to Foley and Foley popped this little pass up and round like a bull-headed locomotive express came Keith Wood and no Englishman, no ten Englishmen were ever going to stop Ireland's captain. Big day for him, uh, eclipsing Tom Kiernan's record as, as, as Irish captain and also becoming Ireland's most capped hooker, taking over from Ken Kennedy in that particular respect. So it was a treble for Keith Wood. The key to it was Anthony's pass. He popped the ball, I could have run any of three or four different lines and the softness of the pass meant I could adjust before taking the ball and it became an easy run over. It's easy on the training pitch. It's seldom these things about Cota on uh, in an in international arena, particularly against a side like England, but thankfully it did. And I think it set the tone for the game. Watch for the softness of the hands of Anthony Foley. I mean, it's just, he gets the ball. That transfer is vital. It's not just there for dressing. <laughs> it's there so that Keith Wood can take it at full tilt without breaking stride. And he almost lets it sit up in the air for like seems like an eternity. Just brilliant soft hands from Foley. He does so much that we don't see that you've got to look at the video for Anthony Foley. He's one of the most selfless team players you'll ever see. And, but that was a little moment of pure class because he is a footballer. Now, will they spread it this time? Humphreys. I think that was a huge psychological uh, boost for Ireland and had the opposite effect for England because it suddenly put into the English camp what you would always want to put into a well organized English team is confusion. This shouldn't be happening. This is not part of the plan. It's not part of the script. Who are these guys? We have, what we have seen of them in the past doesn't measure up to what they're actually doing now. And that was the way that Ireland played the whole match. We don't produce many great players and it was pretty barren area through the 90s and one or two soldiered through. And of all the players who deserve the good days now, Keith Wood, because he soldiered through some grim days. 
and he, he's never possibly been more great than he was that day. It wasn't just the try, it was just general all-round leading from the front performance. If you're in the trenches tomorrow now, he's one of the first guys you want alongside you. Humphreys is not going to take this penalty. He's asked for Roland O'Gara to come on. He doesn't trust himself. This is very kickable, and it's a really important kick. And what a moment for Roland O'Gara to Absolutely. have to come in. Oh, it's a tough one to come on and have to face a kick like this with your first kick of the game. You know, I was stiff as a board going on, really. You kind of subs are always meant to be warm and, you know, have their stretches done and be mustard keen going out. But, um, you know, I went down. First job was just to um, put the ball in the tee and I was going back and obviously my leg was shaking. So um, I took a fairly big divot, but the ball, uh, you know, it didn't fly perfectly, but it got to the right side of the, of the post from my point of view. So it was, uh, you know, I was straight into the match then and uh, obviously that was another special day in Lansdowne Road. So, um, you know, it was a great start and I felt very comfortable from that moment on. Oh, this is a really difficult moment. It's not a difficult kick if you're into the tempo of a match, but... Up it goes, it could be good. It is good! That's a great way to make your presence felt. The key moment in that game, I would probably say when Dan Luger was through and I was almost thinking about his celebration after scoring the try when Peter Stringer tap tackled him and we managed to scramble back and deny them the try. But now it's Luger over halfway. Stringer trying to force him. Oh, look at that skipping past Dempsey. What a tackle by Stringer. A despairing ankle tap was just what was required. If he missed the tackle, which I remember was my fault that he'd got through, I was so eager to get up into the line, I actually broke the line. And Dan got through, and I don't have any doubt for a second, if Dan Luger had not been tackled by Peter Stringer, we would have lost the game. And it's over! And Ireland have done the impossible! It was almost as if we'd won the slam ourselves. Not, not knowing what that feeling's like, I would imagine it to be something similar to that, because the odds were really stacked against us, and it was an Irish side that had performed to close to the best of their ability and denied a really top quality English, English side so um, massive satisfaction was taken out of that game.